We're going to start by looking at the gut wall structure. And we're going to look at this in a generic way using the same structure of four layers that's described throughout the gut, even though the detail at each different part of the gut, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, etc., varies. So starting off with the mucus layer, the innermost of the layers seen in this diagram. So if we focus on this area, we've got the epithelium in the centre, which may vary in terms of its number of goblet cells and the actual epithelial cells, the absorptive surface, etc. This then has a basement membrane which maintains its shape. And then beneath the epithelium, the epithelium marked here, we have what's known as the lamina propria, which is a connective tissue which contains blood vessels and also lymphatics, which are important in absorption. Beneath these layers, we then have the muscularis mucosa. This is a double layer of muscles which are able to move the epithelial surface independent of the actual peristaltic waves going through the gut itself. So they are able to produce small and fairly local movements of the surface of the gut. Stretching through from the submucosa, there may be glands emptying through into the lumen of the gut. If we move out to the next layer, this is what's known as the submucosa. This has elastic fibres in it, which are important in maintaining the shape of the gut after distension from a passing bolus of food, etc. Lying over the surface in the outermost surface of this layer is Meissner's plexus. This is largely parasympathetic and provides secretomotor supply to glands. So it's the layer that's responsible for glandular secretions. It also has some afferent supply, some sensory supply from within the gut. If we now move out to the outer layers, we've got first of all the, the outer two muscular layers. These are made up of an inner circular layer of muscle with circular fibers going round the lumen of the gut. And this is able to contract and relax, so causing peristalsis within the gut. We've then got the outer longitudinal muscle layer, and this can produce shortening and lengthening of individual parts of the gut, so enabling boluses to be moved along. And it's this combination of inner and outer longitudinal muscle movement which enables the bolus to move along the gut. And between these lies Auerbach's plexus. So this is the myenteric plexus which is the motor supply to the gut. It's predominantly sympathetic in supply but also has some sensory afferent fibres within it. The gut is suspended by the mesentery from the abdominal wall and within the mesentery runs the arterial and venous supply and the nerves also pass along the mesentery. The enteric nerves have a great deal of automaticity. There are a number of ganglia within the neural plexi and in total it operates independent of central nervous system input. So it's able to function quite independently in controlling the activity of the gut and movement. And it's often referred to as the enteric nervous system. However, overall control by the central nervous system is important, but it is able to function to some extent independently.